these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Whether God is closing the mouths of lions or protecting three Hebrews in a fiery furnace, God is always present, always carrying out His will. These men were a testimony of God's loving character. And Nebuchadnezzar had that furnace heated up seven times hotter, so hot it killed the men who threw the men, these men in. And when Nebuchadnezzar looks, he sees not three Hebrews, but he sees four. Verse 24, the Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? And the answer and said, yes, king, it's true. Verse 25, and he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Verse 26, the Nebuchadnezzar came near the mouth of the burning, fiery furnace, and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, come forth, come hither. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth out of the midst of the fire. How does Nebuchadnezzar know who's in there with him? Well, Prophets and Kings tells us that Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego had many times witnessed to the king about their God. And so when Nebuchadnezzar says that he sees the Son of God, he has seen Jesus Christ. And what it literally says is sons, Son of the Gods, and later he refers to an angel, but he recognizes this is deity. This is the God of the children of Israel. Now this is not the first time in the Old Testament, or the only time in the Old Testament, that Jesus has appeared. He appeared in Abraham's tent. He appeared before Moses and the children of Israel. Jesus said, Most assuredly, I say to you before Abraham was, I am. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the great I am. Jesus was in that fiery furnace with those three Hebrews. In verse 27, the princes, governors, captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their heads singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. In the New Testament, we have a record of many of Jesus' miracles. And those, those miracles that Jesus performed were not just for the recipients, but there were lessons to be learned. For example, Jesus performed several, I think like about seven miracles on the Sabbath. And it was a blessing for those people. But Jesus wanted to go beyond that. He taught people that he was the creator and the recreator. And likewise, this miracle that Jesus performs for these young Hebrews is not just for them, but a lesson for mankind to learn through the centuries. And through this miracle, Nebuchadnezzar and thousands of his finest political leaders were brought face to face with the God of heaven. Verse 28, then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's words and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own God. And verse 29, Therefore I make a decree, that every people, nation, language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut to pieces. Their houses shall be made a dunghill, and because there is no other God that can deliver after this sight. 
Nebuchadnezzar prays his God of Israel. And he answers that question, what God is able to deliver you from this fiery furnace? As I said earlier, Nebuchadnezzar makes the same mistake twice. Worship the God of Murdoch or be killed. Worship the God of Israel or be killed. Like I said, the people got to see the power and the majesty of the God of Israel. Religious freedom is an attribute of God. Therefore, it is, is an attribute of us as, as Christians. It is an attribute of us as Seventh-day Adventists. There are constant battles being fought on many fronts against religious freedom. There used to be a time when almost all evangelicals were supportive of the separation of church and state. That's not true anymore. More and more denominations are saying there's no such thing as separated church and state. What a tragedy it would be for our country to revert back to the time of the nine colonies in which the state was the army of the church. I don't know what, what the future holds for us as a country, except for what we see in Daniel 3 and Revelation 13. And sometimes when you hear these politicians talking or you hear about all these debates and you, sometimes you find yourself frustrated, there are times that I have to stop myself and say, these are the stepping stones that are moving us to the ultimate climax. Don't be fearful. Recognize that we need to be committed witnesses of Jesus Christ as Satan is unfolding his final drama. A drama that, that yes, will steal our religious freedoms. That, yes, may push us into socialism or may push us into bankruptcy as a nation. The nations are becoming more and more secular, less and less Christian. So rather than being fearful or frustrated by the different political parties and all the games they're playing, to realize that, that God is in control. And that in the end, he will be glorified. And Satan will be defeated. Our decision is, whose side shall we be on? We need to be prayer warriors. That's why in our vision statement we said, walking in Christ through prayer, love, and health, and sharing. We need to be prayer warriors so we can walk through whatever trials the devil throws at us. We need to be prayer warriors so we can be praying for our president and our senators and our House of Representatives and our, our judges. We need to pray for our nation. But we also need to be faithful. We need to represent Christ so the world can know there's a difference between what the devil has to offer and what God has to offer. Like Joshua said, choose this day whom you're going to serve. And so as things unfold, don't be fearful. Just know that God's in control. And he is able to deliver us from this crisis. But if he doesn't, we need to choose to be faithful to whatever trials he wants us to. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for these three Hebrews. Thank you, Lord, for their faithfulness, for their trust in you. And thank you for an amazing, amazing demonstration of your sovereignty. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>